Hello, Dr. Teresa Lyons here, creator of Navigating Autism and Eat to Heal Autism. And this week's Ask Dr. Lyons question is all about comorbidities. So autism comorbidity treatment for optimal outcome, seizures and epilepsy. What works best? Autism, there's that whole dynamics between whether it's more genetic or environmental causes. Not surprisingly, evidence is mounting that autism arises from intricate interactions between genetic predisposition and environmental factors. It's called a multifactorial disease. Acquired genetic mutations could be the result of environmental factors, making environmental factors that much more important to understand. Comorbidity. All right, what is it? Comorbidity is defined as the simultaneous presence of two chronic diseases or conditions in a patient. And it's really important to understand comorbidity with autism because autism has so many comorbid diseases. And if you're trying to heal autism and have an optimal outcome and have your child thrive, then you need to look at your child's entire body. So autism plus what else? It's, it's wrong to think that autism is just everything that's wrong with your child. It's not. It's technically comorbidities. And it's really important to understand the difference. There is evidence of an association between various pathophysiological abnormalities and autism, but yet the exact relationship has not been defined yet. Treatments for some of the comorbidities are well known, Therefore, there is no reason for your child to suffer with certain comorbidities. Healing autism can occur without acknowledging comorbidities, addressing them, and healing them as well. So healing autism can get quite complex, but it's totally doable. Here's a list of autism comorbidities. Seizure and epilepsy, neurotransmitter dysfunction, sleep disorders, metabolic abnormalities, which entails those items, immune disorders, and gastrointestinal disorders. And today we're gonna to focus on seizure and epilepsy, although I have videos that walk you through each one of those comorbidities. Seizures and epilepsy. Although the two terms are often used interchangeably, a seizure is a single occurrence, whereas epilepsy is defined as two or more unprovoked seizures. A seizure is defined as a sudden electrical discharge in the brain causing changes in behavior, sensation, or consciousness. Epilepsy in autism is many times refractory to standard treatments, meaning it doesn't respond to standard treatments. And epilepsy in autism is associated with higher rates of intellectual disability, more severe autism symptoms, and higher rates of mortality. So this is why it's so very important to understand what comorbidities your child has with autism. The co-occurrence of epilepsy with autism is about 35%, and there's also evidence of a higher prevalence of EEG abnormalities, and that's about four to 86% of individuals with autism present EEG abnormalities. EEG abnormalities just means that the electrical charges in your child's brain are abnormal at times. All right, so let's look at the treatments for seizures, seizure treatments. So I'm gonna go through a, what I would call a literature overview on what options there are. In general, anti-epileptic drugs, abbreviated AEDs, were perceived to improve seizures, but worsen other clinical factors. So these are the kind of decisions you have to make if your child has seizures, epilepsy. You certainly want to improve the seizures, but AEDs are known to worsen other clinical factors. So it's that whole give and take. So there are four AEDs that are listed there, and they were perceived to improve seizures the most, and worse than other clinical factors the least out of all the available AEDs. So those four are definitely important to remember. And valproic acid also has been shown to improve core autism symptoms. This study was actually 
done with children with autism who had seizures as well as children with autism who didn't have seizures. And in both those groups, core autism symptoms improved. So it's definitely a AED to keep in mind if your child is dealing with seizures as well as autism. So seizures and the guts. Certain traditional non-AED treatments, particularly the ketogenic diet, the modified Atkins diet, and gluten-free casein-free diet were perceived to improve both seizures and other clinical factors. The ketogenic diet has a long and pretty successful history in treating seizures as well as AED refractory epilepsy. So for those patients who have seizures and they try the traditional AED treatments, if they fail, many times the ketogenic diet works fantastically. And many physicians consider the ketogenic diet to be a first line treatment rather than to go the drug route first. You might be wondering why is the modified Atkins diet there if the ketogenic diet is so great? The ketogenic diet, you're consuming like 90% fat and compliance can be an issue. So that's why there's the modified Atkins diet. So it's a little bit more easier for the patient, your child to follow. And of course there's the gluten-free casein-free diet. These are called traditional non-drug treatments. Traditional because ketogenic diet has been around for almost 100 years. For autism individuals with reported subclinical seizures, other clinical factors were reported to be worsened by AEDs and improved by non-AED traditional seizure and non-traditional treatments. Okay, so what all that means is if you recall the abnormal EEG recordings that anywhere up to 86% of those with autism have, it was found that the traditional drugs, the traditional AEDs, are not really beneficial for people who are having subclinical seizures. Subclinical seizures just means you're having abnormal electrical discharges in your brain, but on the outside, one couldn't tell that you're having a seizure. So... In your brain, there's that subclinical seizure, so there's abnormal electrical discharge going on in your brain, but there's no outward sign that the person is actually having a seizure. So for those people who are having the subclinical seizures, these abnormal EEG readings, um, clinical factors are reported to be worse by AEDs, and they're improved by non-AED traditional seizure and non-traditional treatments. So there really is a strong association between seizures, the gut, and different special diets. Seizures and supplements. All right, so for many parents, they're not too fond of seizure medications, and that's totally understandable. It's a personal choice, and you wanna know all the options. That's why you're listening to this video. So let's get to supplements. All right, so there's limited evidence that supports for those who also have mitochondrial dysfunction as a comorbidity. So yeah, you can have autism and then you can have a seizure epilepsy comorbidity as well as let's say a mitochondrial dysfunction comorbidity. And this is how you heal autism is you really look at all the different comorbidities and start healing them one by one. Folinic acid for those with cerebrofolate abnormalities works great to reduce seizures. There's limited evidence for a number of other treatments, such as magnesium with peroxidine, omega-3 fatty acids, the gluten-free casein-free diet, and low-frequency repetitive transcranial magnetic simulation to reduce seizures. Zinc and L-carcinine are potential novel treatments supported by basic research, but not clinical studies. So if your child has autism as well as seizures or epilepsy, please use this slide as a way to talk to your expert physician about what other options there are based upon your child's other comorbidities. So many of these supplements are really healing certain comorbidities and then there becomes less seizures because the body is healing in other areas. So this is how you want to use that information. And for those of you who like references, here's four important ones that I used in this presentation. 